Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Harry and in two months time, I'm going to be sitting my third GAMSAT. <laughs> so I thought I'd make a video today outlining how I'm going to prepare for that and what I'm actually doing differently this time around studying for it. So to basically catch everybody up to speed who isn't aware, this is my third sitting. So I've already sat it twice. The first time I sat it was in September 2020 and I got a 59 then and I sat it with about one to maybe one and a half months of preparation beforehand. It was very kind of off the cuff. I very much sat the exam on a whim. <laughs> and then after getting that, I thought, hey, let's sit it again. So I sat it in March in 2021 and I had so much more time to prepare then. I gave myself months and months and months and I got a 58. But I applied anyway in 2021 and actually managed to get an interview at Deakin, which was my first preference. However, I couldn't, you know, I had it in the palm of my hand, I had it in my fingertips, within grasp, within arm's reach, but couldn't clutch it and couldn't snag myself a spot, but that's okay. We're trying again this year, we're back on that Gantt hustle, we're back on that preparation, we're back on that interview grind, and we'll get in next year. And then that pretty much brings us to here, where I bought my ticket and registered to sit the GAMSAT in two months time, so March 2022, and I'm pretty much getting ready to get stuck into some really, really, solid study for it. So because I've already sat the GAM set twice, right? I feel like this time around, I'm definitely going to be focusing more on things that I am expecting to appear on the exam in March. I feel like I have a pretty good grasp on kind of what to expect and what kind of questions they're gonna ask. So I feel like this time around, I can really zero in and hone in my study on working on those areas that I find I really struggle with. And basically that's what this video is gonna be about today. I'm just gonna be outlining what I'm going to be doing differently and what I'm going to be focusing on for each individual section. And hopefully you guys all get something out of it. All right, so section one, section one I actually find to be a really difficult and tricky section to actually study and improve upon. Like I always think I'm doing really, really well when I'm reading through a passage and I manage to narrow it down to a 50-50, so about two answers. And then I just can't differentiate them. I end up just having to guess and that's, pretty much most of my section one, which is an ideal, right? Which makes me think, well, what is the biggest issue here? Is it being able to understand the theme of the text or is it not having the vocabulary to be able to differentiate between two very similar words? And it's totally the vocabulary, right? So I think my plan here is to really start honing in and building up my vocabulary leading into the exam so that I have a little bit more of a repertoire of words, I suppose, to be able to make those clear cut decisions when I need to. I've been reading heaps over the last 12 months as well. And I think that's really gonna help me to build up my ability to comprehend passages and also like little things, just like being able to read quicker as well. And that's probably one of the biggest tips I could give people for trying to improve in section one is to just read. Just read as much as you can, whether you're reading like editorial articles, whether you're reading fiction, non-fiction, poems, picture books, whatever, just read something and read broadly because the more you can read and the more widely you can grab these sources, the more you're gonna build up your ability to read different styles of writing. And then when you encounter something similar to that in the GAMSAT, it's not gonna be such as a shock. You know, you're gonna read reading, you're gonna be like, oh, this is familiar to that other style of writing that I was reading the other day. I know I struggle with this, or I know I'm really good at this. Awesome, I can relax a little bit. So if you can, read heaps of books because it will just broaden your ability to understand different styles and different passages of writing. And something that I've mentioned in other videos as well that I am also going to be utilizing heaps and really try and be really structured on is this website called vocabulary.com. Now basically this is just a website that tests you on new vocab and you can select like different themes of words you wanna learn or different literary devices and things like that. So if you want to build up your vocabulary, I think this is a really good way to actually do that. It will also be really helpful with our section two as well. So as a summary for section one, basically, Every day for about 15 to 30 minutes, I'm going to be doing some vocabulary.com work just to build up my vocabulary and hopefully learn some new words for the test and read. I'm gonna read, I'm just gonna keep reading and read as much as I can and try and really, really read for comprehension and understanding. Now, section two, right? <laughs> so section two, this has been my best performing section each year, every time I've sat the GAMSA. 
So I think I'm gonna keep things roughly the same with how I do this. And the way I structure my essays is that I generally like to define a societal problem from the prompts. I then try and figure out who it's affecting, why this matters, and then what we can actually do to alleviate this problem. Now this has worked well for me, so I think I'm going to continue doing this, but hopefully I can build up some more complex and deeper ideas to allow me to snag a few extra marks. Something I've learned real recently is that I've run into this bloke called Michael Sutherland. Now basically, he made it like his mission, I suppose, to try and crack the code that is section 2 in the GAMS app, and he did it. So I think the first time he sat the GAMS app, he got a 90 in section 2, and then the second time he got a 91. Like this bloke is an absolute chip, you know? Like he knows exactly what you need to do to ace the essay in the GAMS app. So he's got a YouTube video where he talks about a few of these things. He's got a Facebook page as well. So I've joined both of them and I've been really trying to consume as much content as I can. Basically he talks a lot about creating an essay based around logic to prove your contention, right? Which is basically using logic to try and prove what your opinion is on the essay. And I think this is a really strong way to talk about an essay because it can be really personal. And he talks a lot about not degrading the other side of the argument, which I think is also a really important point as well. So I think my plan is to still stick with my initial structure on what I know I can write well, but then hopefully utilize some of the little extra bits and pieces that I've picked up from him to hopefully try and give myself a little bit more depth and a little bit more complex ideas and structure it in a way that's a little bit more well refined. So if you need some extra resources for your section two, go have a look at him and go suss out the Facebook page and look at some of his videos on YouTube because it, although it is pretty complex, I find it is worthwhile just to introduce those topics to your way of thinking so that you can have them in the back of your head ticking over as you're moving through your own essays. When it comes to studying and improving for the game set, I wholeheartedly believe that section two is the section that we should be putting the most of our effort into. And that's because it's the section that is most widely understood as to what is required to do well in that section of the exam meaning that it's the most directly measurable. Now, what I mean by this is that it is the one section where the inputs directly affect the outputs in the most immediate way. Basically saying that the better we get at writing an essay, the better our score in section two will become. It is the simplest section to improve, as opposed to something like section three, where yes, we can learn heaps of physics, and yes, we can learn heaps of chemistry and heaps of maths knowledge, but there's no guarantee that we're actually gonna be able to utilize those specific aspects on the test, or that we're even gonna get questions that ask us to use those skills that we've spent the last two or three months learning and building. Whereas in an essay, you are always going to be using those essay skills every single section too, because it never changes. There's no ambiguity surrounding what you actually have to do for the, for the section. The only thing you have to figure out is the prompt. So if you can build your essay skills to a really, really high level and fine tune it really, really well, you can use that section to carry you above all of section one and section three. Like take my score, for example, right? I'm pretty sure just off the top of my head, I got like a 55 in section one and a 54 or 53 in section three, right? But I got like a 67 or a 65 in my section two, which is bumping me up to a 59 and actually making me competitive. So now in terms of practicing, I'm basically just gonna be writing an essay or two a week. That's probably my limit at the moment because I've got a lot of other things I need to get done in between now and March with like Cert4 training for my new job. I'm gonna try and get two essays in a week, but if I can't, I'll get at least one. And I'm just gonna get M to correct them like I have done for the last year. Now, something I like to do as well, which seems a little weird, but I find it really, really helps, is that after I've written an essay, I go over it myself and I annotate it with a red pen or red text on the computer because I find that it really highlights areas where I could have improved in a passage or it highlights an area where I had poor grammar or my hook wasn't strong enough. And going through it myself and being critical of my own work, I find just makes me a little bit more self-aware. So then when I write my next essay, I have that all in the back of my mind and I'm thinking about it and I can pick myself up on something if my hook hasn't been right or there should be a comma here or a full stop or my sentence is too long. So yeah. So summarizing section two, I'm just gonna keep things pretty much the same, try and bump it up to two essays a week, but really utilize those skills and those ideas that Michael Sutherland talks about on his channel and on his Facebook page and see how I go. Now, when it comes to section three, 
This has always been my hardest section and I really wish I had some big insightful way to learn and build and grow in this section. But unfortunately, I do not. <sighs> I always feel really, really confident when I go into section three and I always feel like I've done so much prep and I'm so psyched for it and I feel like I'm just gonna absolutely smash it this time. And then I get in there and I just have no idea what's going on, but I still somehow scrape through okay. For my previous sittings, I've gone through all the ACEs tests multiple times. I've taught myself chemistry and physics. I feel like I'm really, really capable with my math now. So I think my next step here is to try and be really analytical of myself and try and figure out why I'm struggling with these questions and really try and hone in on my own deep critical thinking skills. Because I think that's what section three is really trying to test us. It's not trying to test us on our science ability or our ability to understand chemistry topics or physics concepts. It's really trying to grasp our ability to critically think and analyze a set piece of information. So starting off now for section three, I'll probably just go over the Acer books one last time, just to, you know, get the old noggin moving a little bit. And then I might look at some Des books just because I know they're kind of old and they're a bit outdated, but I've heard a lot of people kind of mention online that they're really good at just kind of testing your ability to work out a problem and work out a solution. So I think that might be a good option to go down, but I think overall really just need to try and work on my critical thinking and what I'm doing wrong and how I can kind of assess and get questions right without actually being 100% aware of the theory that they're trying to test us on. So to summarize section three, I'm basically just gonna go through all the ACER tests again, um, look at some DES questions and see if they're helpful and really useful and try and power my way through a couple of them. Other than that, I think I'll be doing some serious soul searching and some serious thinking to try and figure out how I can improve my ability to critically think. So thanks for tuning in everyone. I genuinely think that everybody can improve their scores and do well on the GAMSAT. It's all about isolating your problem and then knowing how to actually fix it. If you like the video and you wanna see more content just like this, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment down below about how you're studying for the GAMSAT because I love, 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 love to see what you guys are getting up to. And until next time, have a good one and I'll see you later. Bye.